What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another Tech Gear Talk. Today we're gonna to compare two excellent cameras, the Sony a6400 and the Fuji X-T30. On the one side we have the a6400, which is a very good 24 megapixel APS-C sensor camera from Sony. On the other side we have the X-T30, which is a very capable 26 megapixel APS-C sensor camera from Fuji. Both cameras were released in February of 2019 and are currently priced at 900 bucks. I've used both cameras extensively and I've already published dedicated reviews. So if you're interested, I'll leave links in the description and at the end of the video. There were things that I liked and things that I disliked about each camera. And I'm gonna talk about their strengths and weaknesses when it comes to photography and video. And hopefully I can help you decide which option is best for you. My goal with every product comparison is to give you a detailed overview of the products and then compare them in a way that relates to real life use. And my reviews and comparisons tend to be on the longer side because I do my best to share actual user experience with you rather than just the specs. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna get into the details for each aspect of the two cameras, but I wanna first very quickly go over some key features in case you're just starting your research. The A6400 has a really nice magnesium alloy body with sealed buttons and dials. It has a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and the Bions X image processor. It can shoot up to 4K 30 and 1080p or Full HD at 120 frames per second. The A6400 uses a hybrid autofocus system with 425 phase and contrast detection points. It has a 3 inch 921,000 flip LCD screen and can internally record 4K 30 frames per second 420 or externally of 422. It has a nice 2.36 million dot OLED electronic viewfinder. It can shoot continuously at up to 11 frames per second and has an expandable ISO of up to 102,400. The Fuji X-T30 features a 26.1 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor and the X processor 4. It uses a hybrid autofocus system with 425 phase detection points that cover nearly the entire sensor. It has a three inch 1.04 million dot two way tilting LCD touchscreen and a high resolution OLED electronic viewfinder. It can internally record 4K 30 frames per second at up to 200 megabits per second and has super fast continuous shooting at up to 30 frames per second. It can shoot full HD or 1080p at up to 120 frames per second for great slow motion and has integrated Bluetooth 4.2 which allows you to wirelessly share images to mobile device or to use the device to remotely control the X-T30. I wanna start out by talking about the sensor and the processor. And I do my best to answer every question that I can, so if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and put them in the comment section below. The A6400 comes with a 24 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor, and the X-T30 comes with a 26 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. Both sensors are BSI or backside illuminated, meaning that some of the elements were moved to the back of the sensor with the goal being better low light performance. Sony did an excellent job with their sensor, and in my experience, the A6400 has very good low light performance. And the X-T30 actually uses the same sensor as the more expensive X-T3, and I was incredibly impressed with its performance. Both sensors have a crop factor of 1.5X, meaning that when you're looking at lenses, if you wanna know the 35 millimeter or full frame sensor equivalent field of view, you take the number of the lens and you multiply by 1.5. That means that if I put a 50 millimeter lens on either camera and apply 1.5 crop factor, it will give me the 35 millimeter equivalent field of view of a 75 millimeter lens. As far as dynamic range, the A6400 is reported to capture 10.6 stops of dynamic range at ISO 100, and the X-T30 delivers 9.5 stops of dynamic range at ISO 160. We're seeing a little over a full stop higher on the A6400 and at a lower ISO. So when you're shooting in situations where there's a significant discrepancy between the brightest and the darkest parts of your scene, a camera with a higher dynamic range is going to be able to maintain detail in both the shadows and the highlights a lot better than a camera with a more limited dynamic range. Fuji does offer three different dynamic range options, which allowed me to bring out more detail out of the shadows as long as I didn't mind increasing the minimum ISO. We'll get into image quality later on in the video, but I felt that both cameras produced very pleasing images in bright daylight and in low light situations. I was extremely happy with the performance of both sensors and for the price, 
I think these represent two of the best options on the market right now. I'll also include additional images and footage at the end of this video, so make sure you watch to the end. As far as processors, the A6400 uses the Byance X processor, and the X-T30 uses the X processor 4. The combination of a good sensor and powerful processor in both cameras produced very nice images and video for me. As far as actually using the cameras, general menu operation is fast for both. Both have quick startup and things like image preview and video playback are nice and fast. Because of how I shoot, one of the features that I look at for every camera that I test is continuous or burst shooting. I can just point the camera at a subject, hold down the shutter and the camera will just keep firing. And this is a nice feature if you're photographing sports, pets, kids running around, or any fast moving subjects. Now, of course, the more frames you have per second, the more exposures you'll have to pick from later on. The A6400 can shoot it up to 11 frames per second in burst mode, and the X-T30 can shoot it up to 30 frames per second if you're willing to use the electronic shutter. This fast burst shooting in the X-T30 comes at the cost of a 1.25x crop, but you can get rid of the crop if you're willing to step down to 20 frames per second, which is still extremely fast. If you wanna switch over to a mechanical shutter, now we're looking at eight frames per second on the X-T30. And I talked about the difference between using mechanical shutter versus electronic shutter in my detailed review. When we look at buffer memory, we see that Sony reports 99 JPEGs or 46 raw images for the A6400 versus 26 JPEGs and 17 raw images for the X-T30. And this means that you'll need to decide what's more important to you. If you want the fastest burst shooting, giving you the most options to choose from for a short period of time, you're gonna wanna go with the X-T30. If on the other hand, you wanna hold down the shutter and shoot for a few seconds, giving you more choices overall, then the A6400 is a better option for you. I'm not gonna give the edge to either one in terms of burst shooting because it comes down to how you shoot and what's important to you. Moving on, one of the most important things for me with any tool that I use is ergonomics. And I look at it in terms of both handling and functionality. As far as size goes, both cameras are small, which makes them great options when it comes to portability. The A6400 is a tiny bit wider and heavier, but the X-T30 is taller because the viewfinder extends towards the top. Both cameras feel like they have very good build quality, but the A6400 is the only one that mentions some weather sealing to make it dust and moisture resistant. In terms of handling, because the X-T30 is taller, I could get more of my right hand on the side of the camera but the grip is very small and I found it less comfortable to hold. The A6400 is shorter, but the grip is deeper, which I preferred. As far as battery life, the A6400 uses the NPFW50 battery and it's rated for 360 shots using the viewfinder and 410 shots using the LCD. On the other hand, the X-T30 uses the NPW126S lithium ion battery, which gives it a rating of 380 shots. Neither cameras came with a battery charger, so the batteries must be charged in the camera unless you buy a charger. Sony uses a micro USB and Fuji uses USB-C, so I'm gonna give a slight edge here to Fuji because I prefer USB-C. Let's talk a little bit about the viewfinders. Because of the A6400's rangefinder style design, the viewfinder doesn't protrude from the body, which contributes to an overall more compact design. Both viewfinders use a 0.39 inch panel with 2.36 million dots, but the A6400 has a larger magnification at 0.7 versus 0.62, and a faster refresh rate of 120 frames per second versus 100 frames per second on the X-T30. The higher selectable refresh rate of 120 on the A6400 can lead to a slightly smoother viewing experience when panning or when following moving subjects but it wasn't something that was very noticeable to me in real life. Next, I wanna discuss the buttons and dials on these cameras. I think that if you're buying a camera and you're just using it with the factory settings, then you're really missing out. Part of what you get when you're buying a higher end camera is the ability to customize it to work for exactly how you shoot. The A6400 uses the top dial and the control wheel on the back for aperture and shutter speed, and it has two custom buttons that you can use to get quick access to frequently used features. The X-T30 has a shutter speed dial at the top, as well as one for exposure compensation. There is a front command dial and a rear command dial for dedicated and more precise control. On the left side of the X-T30, you'll find the drive dial, which lets you 
very quickly go from movie mode to single shooting, continuous shooting, and bracketing options. I also like the fact that Fuji implemented a focus stick, which is this little joystick that you can use to move the focus point around. This joystick is also used instead of the four-way arrow control that we often see on other models. I don't ever use the shutter speed dial on the top of the X-T30, but I really like having the two dials on the front and on the back. On the A6400, I have to readjust my thumb position and grip every time I wanna adjust shutter speed or aperture, whichever one I have programmed to the back wheel. In concept, I like having the exposure compensation dial at the top of the X-T30 because of how easy it is to access. But I do find that I sometimes inadvertently hit it because there's really no way to lock it in place. Moving on, both cameras have quick menu options. The A6400 has a programmable menu with 12 options, while the X-T30 has a fixed quick menu. On the one hand, I like the fact that I can customize the A6400 menu. But on the other hand, I like that the X-T30 menu lets me make changes using the touchscreen. And I'll talk more about this later. As far as ease of use, I probably like the Fuji controls better and I slightly prefer the menu system to that of the Sony. Next, I wanna talk about resolution, frame rates, and image quality. For photography, the A6400 offers a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image, and the X-T30 offers a 6240 by 4160 image, so as far as strict resolution goes, the slight edge goes to the X-T30. Both cameras can shoot in both JPEG and RAW, so you can decide how much information you wanna capture, depending on what you plan on doing with these images in post-production. The photos I got from both cameras were clean and crisp, and I was super impressed with the overall image quality. The X-T30 gave me super sharp images with very good low light performance, and while I mostly shoot in RAW, the Fuji color processing is amazing, and there are outstanding film simulation modes. The A6400 also produced excellent results for me, but I think that the X-T30 has a slight advantage in terms of low light performance. I can do a more detailed image quality comparison in another video, so if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments section and make sure that you're subscribed and then you have notifications turned on. Overall, when shooting JPEGs, I love the image quality and color that I got from the X-T30, and when shooting RAW, I may have noticed better dynamic range on the A6400, but lower noise on the X-T3 at higher ISO. And I think I'm gonna call it a draw for now because for 900 bucks, it's pretty amazing what both of these cameras can do. Moving on to video, the A6400 can record 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, and full HD or 1080p at 24, 30, 60, and 120 frames per second. The A6400 can also record it up to 4K 30, 4228 bit, via a clean HDMI out, and that's at 100 megabits per second. The X-T30 can record 4K video at 24 and 30 frames per second, and Full HD at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. The X-T30 internally records up to 4K 30 at 420 10-bit, as well as up to 4K 30, 422 10-bit via a clean HDMI out, and both at 200 megabits per second. Overall, 4K footage from both cameras is absolutely beautiful with outstanding color and detail. The X-T30 has the edge here with a higher bit rate and the ability to shoot 4K 30 with no crop. For 1080p, I'm happy with the footage I get from both cameras at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second, but again, the Sony has the option for 120 frames per second, which gives it a slight edge. Now, both cameras offer additional enhanced recording speed options. The A6400 offers a video option called SNQ, which if you're not familiar with, allows you to select a frame rate ranging from one frame per second all the way up to 120 frames per second. The camera will then either slow it down or speed it up to 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. If you're using SNQ 120 frames per second, you watch the clip in the camera or on your computer, it's already slowed down versus shooting regular 1080p 120 frames per second, which means you'll have to slow it down in post-production. The Fuji X-T30 has a high-speed movie mode, which lets you capture full HD or 1080p at 100 or 120 frames per second, and then play it back at 24, 25, 50, or 60 frames per second for slow motion. And there are advantages to both. The A6400 offers more frame rate options, while the X-T30 offers face detection autofocus when shooting slow motion. But there's a little more to the story here when we're comparing the two cameras for video. The A6400 has no recording time limit in 4K 
or in 1080p, while the X-T30 has a 10 minute recording limit in 4K, and then the standard 30 minute recording limit and 1080p. Not everyone needs to shoot longer clips, but if you're looking to record things like long interviews or lectures and wanna record internally, the A6400 is gonna be a better option. If you're gonna record it to an external recorder because both cameras have a clean HDMI out, then this isn't really an issue and you can essentially record until you run out of space. And in addition to the clean HDMI out, both cameras can be used for live streaming with continuous autofocus and face tracking. Moving on to time-lapse, both cameras offer interval shooting, which lets you have full control over your time-lapse. You can drag your shutter and you can get the exact results that you want. Once you're done shooting, you will need to take the individual photos and compile a time-lapse video using software. So to recap these two for video, there are advantages to each camera here. We have a higher bit rate for both internal and external recording with the X-T30, no crop in 4K30, face detection in slow motion, and I like the film simulation options for video better than those on the A6400 if I don't plan on doing much in post. And at the same time, the A6400 has no recording time limit, additional frame rate options, and I mostly shoot in S-Log2 or HLG, which means that I plan on doing color correcting and grading in post. All right, moving on next, let's talk about autofocus. And before I get into the numbers and the specs, I'm gonna tell you that the autofocus on both cameras is fantastic. The A6400 has 425 phase and 425 contrast detection points, covering 84% of the sensor. The X-T30 uses 117 hybrid points that cover 99% of the surface of the sensor, and then are subdivided into 425 points in modes like single point autofocus. I also really like that I can use the joystick on the back to move the autofocus point around rather than having to touch the screen. For photography, both were extremely fast and accurate for both single and continuous autofocus. The A6400 might be slightly faster, but both are so good that you can't really go wrong. The eye autofocus has been really good with both cameras, and I absolutely love that when I'm shooting portraits, I don't have to worry about getting the focus point exactly on the subject's eye, and I can just concentrate on framing. If eyes are not detected, both cameras will revert back to face tracking. The A6400 also offers animal eye autofocus, which is really important to me because I take a lot of photos of my dogs and traditional zone autofocus usually focuses on their nose because it's closer to the camera. For video, I really like the A6400 autofocus and I find that it's fast, accurate, and it doesn't hunt. Now some older Fuji models gave me trouble with autofocus for video, but Fuji's definitely made some significant upgrades and I've been very impressed with the X-T30. Both cameras also offer face and eye detection for video, but the X-T30 eye autofocus didn't work for me when the person was wearing glasses. An advantage of the A6400 is that it offers subject tracking in addition to face and eye detection, meaning that I can click on any subject on the frame and the A6400 will keep it in focus even as it moves through the frame. The X-T30 can do that, but only with faces. But there's another twist here because when shooting at 120 frames per second for slow motion, the X-T30 still has face detection while the A6400 loses face and subject tracking. So to recap, both autofocus systems are fantastic. The X-T30 autofocus points cover a larger portion of the sensor and we still have face detection when shooting in slow motion. But the Sony is slightly faster, has more versatile eye detection, subject tracking for video, and animal eye autofocus. Moving on, I think that a lot of people forget to consider lens options when choosing between cameras from different brands. In terms of sheer number of lenses, there are more options for Sony E-mount than there are for Fuji's X-mount, but this isn't how I choose to evaluate the two systems. Fuji has an exceptional range of lenses, particularly fast primes, which will cover what most users are going to need. I also like how small and light their primes are, because we're talking about putting them on a small body. On the other hand, Sony's APS-C E-mount lineup has less appealing selection in my opinion, with some good primes, but most zooms offer an F4 maximum constant aperture or slower. But because I also own the a7 III, I end up getting full frame lenses that I can use with both cameras. And in addition, Sigma makes some really nice and affordable F1.4 primes for Sony's APS-C cameras. I'll put links in the description to some of my favorite lenses for each camera, 
and those links will always be updated with the lowest prices. Let's talk a little bit about the screen. The A6400 has a 3 inch 922,000 LCD tilting flip screen, while the XT30 has a 1.04 million dot 3 inch tilting LCD. In terms of positioning, both can tilt down and up, but the A6400 is more versatile because it flips 180 degrees to face the front so you can see yourself when you're in front of the camera. The front facing or selfie mode isn't gonna be important for everyone, but it's a nice option to have, especially for creators working alone. In terms of image quality, both screens were crisp and sharp, which worked in essentially any environment. And of course, both cameras have viewfinders if you're in extremely bright conditions. Sony and Fuji refer to their screens as touch screens, but there are definitely limitations. Both cameras allow you to use this screen for focus, but neither camera lets you use the touchscreen functionality for the main menu. An advantage of the X-T30 is that you can use the touchscreen to navigate the quick menu, which has most of the functions that I use on a regular basis. It's still strange to me that both companies haven't extended the touch functionality to the entire operation, but as far as the touchscreen functionality, I'm gonna give the edge to the X-T30. When evaluating the entire screen, the A6400 has the advantage because it can face the front, but the X-T30 has a slightly higher resolution and added touch functionality. So you have to decide what's important to you. Next, I wanna talk about other features that both of these cameras have that may help you make a buying decision. And first, I wanna talk about image stabilization. Neither the A6400 nor the X-T30 offer IBIS or in-body image stabilization, so you'll have to rely on lens-based stabilization. Sony calls this OSS and Fuji calls it OIS, so make sure to look for that on the lenses that you buy, if this is something that you're interested in. The next thing I wanna talk about is the apps. The A6400 uses the Imaging Edge app and the X-T30 uses the Fuji Camera Mode app. I go into more detail in the full review but the biggest problem with these apps is that you can't see which autofocus mode is selected and you can't change modes. You also can't see where the focus point is or select a different focus point, which makes the app almost useless for me for video unless I'm only using them to frame myself and to start and stop recording. What's nice is you are able to preview and transfer images and video to your mobile device from both apps. The last thing I wanna talk about has to do with audio. While both cameras offer an external mic input, the A6400 uses a traditional 3.5 millimeter input, while the X-T30 uses a 2.5 millimeter input. I have no idea why Fuji did this, and it will mean that you're almost guaranteed to need an adapter for your microphone. And it's not the end of the world, but it seems like a very strange choice by Fuji. All right, so which camera is a better value and which one should you get? In order to make a decision, we need to discuss the cost. At the time that I'm making this video, both cameras cost 900 bucks. So price isn't gonna be a factor, and in my opinion, both are fantastic values. The A6400 has an extra stop of dynamic range, a larger buffer for continuous shooting, a deeper grip, which is more comfortable to hold, no record time limit in 4K or 1080p, more frame rate options in S and Q, faster autofocus, more versatile IAF with animal eye autofocus, subject tracking for video, a flip screen, and a standard size external mic input. The X-T30 has a higher resolution for stills, better low light performance, faster continuous shooting, a higher bit rate, fantastic film simulations, more buttons and dials, added touch functionality and autofocus point manipulation, excellent JPEG color processing, face tracking and slow motion, and outstanding fast primes. I always say that you can't have everything in any camera, so it comes down to what's important to you. I do my best to answer every question, so if you have any questions for me, just fire away. I'll put links in the description to where you can get the A6400 and the X-T30, as well as some popular kits and accessories. There are always holiday specials and discounts, so the links will be updated with the lowest pricing. If you end up ordering anything using those links, you can help support my channel for free and help me create more content for you, so thank you in advance. I also have links in the description to the more detailed video about each camera in case you want a more in-depth review. I really hope this video gave you a good comparison between the Sony a6400 and the Fuji X-T30 I would love to hear in the comment section which option is best for you or if you have any other comments or question. If this video was helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up, tweet it, share it, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe 
and notification buttons. You can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. And you know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.